Hello, Aussies worldwide. I'm Dave Kessler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today, we're going to talk about magnetic loop antennas. This is motivated by a question from Jordan Thompson, N7XLD. Okay, and his question is this. With respect to mag loop antennas, is the location of the inner driven loop position critical? Yes. Uh, I have seen antennas where the loop has a gap or is touching the outer loop. I have also seen others that have the driven loop at the same level and on the ins outside of the outer loop. Okay, well moving it around a little bit is not going to hurt it very much. Okay, let's start by drawing a loop. We have a large a uh, highly conductive loop here. Sometimes it's even made of copper. Um, portable loops often use the coax braid uh, in a piece of coax that's a loop. They're about three feet or one meter in diameter and there is a capacitor. Now that capacitor is humongous. The reason is is to get the plates far enough apart to withstand the high voltage. This is a resonant circuit this is the highest magnetic point here. This is the highest capacitive point here. And this can actually be a few thousand volts across the capacitor. So some of them are very, very large. The MFJ one is huge. It'll take 100 watts. Uh, there's some portable ones out there like from Chameleon and so on that uh, uh, take a little less power. And uh, Chameleon plays games with a uh, extra capacitor out here that uh, works on RF. I have it. It, it does work. Uh, and then the thing is fed by a small loop. And looking into this, you've got 50 ohms. Okay. And this is a variable capacitor, and it tunes the loop. Tuning is touchy on a loop. The uh, MFJ1 has a little stepping motor that turns this very, very, very slowly. It takes quite a bit of time. There's a, a controller for it down in the ham shack, and it's got some automation in it so that um, once you find what you're going to tune for, you put out a low power signal, hit the thing to go, and it will continue going around until it finds the uh, uh, the, the right uh, frequency on that capacitor. And the tuning is very, very high Q, meaning the bandwidth on the lower band, uh, lower frequencies, 40 meters, for example, is uh, on the order of, um, you know, 15, 20 kilohertz. Uh, so you can't use this uh, in the, you cannot use a transmitting loop as a receive loop for a um, your your pan adapter it will however work very well with the radio a loop although small physically small three feet works as well as a dipole so you get it outside get it up a little bit it'll act just like a dipole now that may seem odd but this is the magnetic equivalent of what you're doing with the dipole and the it's a compromise antenna because you don't get the full um, you don't get the full bandwidth on the thing. A dipole on 40 meters will cover the whole band. A magnetic loop on any band will only cover um, at the lower bands um, a narrow bandwidth you know, 10 to 15 kilohertz, maybe a little bit more. You go to the higher bands, like 10 meters, it'll cover up to maybe 50 kilohertz on either side of the band. Um, Alex Loop has a really nifty little loop tuner aid, but only if you're in a place where you can see it. It tells you where you're tuned. Okay, so the question is about the shape of that. Now, in most people assume a circle, but the MFJ website suggests you squash it a bit. 
like that and get it a little closer to the main loop. And that does help. I've tried it. It does help. Um, anything you do is going to affect the cue of the circuits. It's going to affect the bandwidth, uh, which is the great compromise here. But otherwise, you're going to get um, a signal that's just as good as a dipole. I was amazed when I got the loop from MFJ. Now, I bought the loop. It's one of my early purchases from MFJ, uh, where I used channel funds to buy it. And um, so I could say anything about it I wanted to. Uh, I will say this, that tuning is awkward, but once you get used to it, you can do it pretty quickly. Now, there's a, an Italian firm that makes these loops. I'm going to do a separate video on them. I did a video uh, recently about the order in which things needed to appear in the station. And the guy said he had a baby loop from an Italian manufacturer. And I didn't look up what that was. And I apologize because I really screwed it up. It's actually a full-blown loop. Uh, I don't know why they called it a baby loop. There's nothing baby about this. It's a pretty good sized thing. You can mount these vertically or horizontally. If you mount it vertically, right where I've got the pen, there's a null going through the thing. If it comes off the side like this, it's fine. So you can put it on its side and then it'll act, uh, spread out its signal very nicely. Um, I have mine currently mounted horizontally on our roof. However, I don't have enough lightning arresters to bring in a coax for it. Um, I've got too many out there. I've got a, a project in mind to put more lightning arresters in and kind of neaten the thing up. I'm looking at putting one of these uh, in here um, for the many different uh, coaxes that I have, and I can bring them in and out without going under the house and so on. So that'll be a project coming up. I better get on it. It's uh, July 31st. We're going to run out of summer before you know it. Okay, so this is an example. Yes, it does help. Look at your instructions. Do experiments. Check both 40 meters and 15 meters uh, and so on for your mag loop there. He doesn't see which magnetic loop he has. Um, note these are all insulated, so if they touch the thing, they're not really touching because there's insulation. Some will have the loop down lower. You could even put it below, but I think what they're trying to do with this is keep all the stuff together, keep all the magnetism inside. This is a toroid. So, again, transmitting antenna, You've got to have the capacitance tuned just right. The capacitors on these things are huge, huge monstrous things. I've done antennas on magnetic loop. Go in my channel, uh, any page in my channel, and it's got a place at the top where you can search my channel and search for magnetic loop, and you'll see uh, some of these being put in here. In the meantime, Jordan, I think that uh, answers your question, and uh, we'll talk to you later. Now, I want to introduce a new feature of this channel. My study is filled with books and gadgets I've accumulated from having this channel, and it's time to thin the herd, so to speak. I'm announcing my first giveaway to hams in the USA. The item to be given away this time is a book called Novel Antennas from the Radio Society of Great Britain. I picked it up at Dayton. Here's how the giveaway works. It's totally free to you. Send a postcard, QSL card, or simply a one-page letter by snail mail to P.O. Box 98, Ridgeway, Colorado, 81432 to KE0OG. On whatever you send, make sure to include the giveaway number, in this case, one, your name and call sign and shipping address. Please include your phone number in case I have questions. Please, nothing else. Though if you want to send a picture of you and your station, I might be able to show those during the live stream. Electronic submissions will not be accepted. The drawing will take place on the live stream held on Thursday evening U.S. time on August 26th. Note that I will be paying the book shipping, so it's totally free to you. I hope to do something like this every month. Note that after the drawing, 
all entries will be discarded and no information will be kept or transcribed okay for privacy so there you have it if you would like to help support this channel you may do so by going to dcastler.com support and picking a way that you find most helpful please also subscribe and click the bell and click the like don't forget to comment and until we next meet 73.